sports and pop culture site Grantland posted an article on January 15th titled Dr. V's Magical Putter. The subject of the Grantland article, Dr. Asse Ann Vanderbilt, was outed by the reporter to one of her investors. She tragically committed suicide before the article went to print. For this conversation, we thought it would be best to hear from members of the transgender community directly. Fusion staff member Maddie Powers joins us this morning. Thank you for joining us, Maddie. Hi, Thank Maddie. You so How are much. you? Thank you so much. Welcome to the show. I mean, this case raises a lot of big questions, but let's start with your story. Oh, me? Yes, <laughs> okay. you. Walk me through it all. Tell me a little bit about yourself. Well, I'm a late bloomer. I mean, you know, to, to say, talk about transgender, the one thing we know about transgender is that you don't know anything about transgender. Everybody is different. There's a whole range of, of um, expressions of the transgenderism. Uh, for me, I'm a late bloomer. I can only talk about myself. Yeah. But um, I was a cross-dresser since I was very young and um, only had this really great career. I've been in the media business for 40 years almost. And everybody knew me a certain way and I wasn't rocking the boat. Things were going great. So why change things? Why make it a topic of conversation when you go to work? But it was a secret that I had, deadly secret. And I think that's what happened to this person in this article is that she had a secret and it was a deadly secret. And you can't have secrets. So for me, it was the decision that I couldn't have a secret. I needed to be out and open about it so people wouldn't suspect me or be suspicious about me, be, you know, worried about me living next door to them with their three kids and their wife and their family and have a single white person living next to them who had the secret in their closet. Was there a specific story, something that happened that made you open your eyes and say, this is it, I'm not going to live in a secret? The way transgenderism has been portrayed in the media is had really kind of a negative, for me, a very negative slant. Going back to the 50s, Milton Berle with his very ugly portrayal of transgenderism, he, he used to do a drag thing on his show every week. And um, movies like Silence of the Lambs that portray transgender people as sexual deviants and perverts, or even the movie Psycho with Alfred Hitchcock and the Bates Motel where the, uh, the guy dressed up in his mother's clothes and killed Janet Lee. Um, there have been some good portrayals in the media, but even those portrayals have been um, more comedy, more like, and they all involved a secret, like some like it hot with Marilyn Monroe and Tony Curtis, mm -hmm. where these two guys were escaping the mob because they had, they knew something or whatever. And, um, or Tootsie, actually, so Dustin Hoffman did a wonderful job section. portraying the transgender. But in the end, it was it was it was a comedy, and there was a, there was a secret. He had this double life, so it's never really been tr portrayed as a real people being real people. Tell me about that transition journey. Me? Yeah. Very slow. Very gradual, very methodical. What else can I say about it? Cocoon to butterfly. Look how beautiful. Uh, thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> how do you decide, for example, um, when did you decide to go for the name change, for example? No name change for me. A lot of people change names, but I decided I was going to just stay with my name. My name is Maddie Powers. I've always been known as Maddie Powers. My screen credits have always been Maddie Powers. That's what I've always been. So it, it, it's um, Maddie is kind of like, could be either one, androgynous male or female, so I always stay with that. What's the biggest misconception and what would you say was your biggest challenge? I know it wasn't like an Ooh. abrupt transition. Biggest challenge is like, again, it's hard to say what the biggest challenge is. There's so many challenges. There's so much homophobia about it. It's, let, let's put it this way. Um, I've never been, I've never had secrets about myself in all my relationships with men or women, whatever, mostly females. I like females mostly. Um, but most of my relationships, people who know me as a man, find out about the girl part of me, they, it always turns into something about them. It's like, okay, well, I'm with this person. Does that mean I like people like that? Does that mean I'm gay? Does that mean I'm a lesbian if it's a female? You know, it's not about them. It's about me being who I am. The reason I decided to express myself like this is it to help you understand who I am. Basically, I'm not your typical guy. I, I can show you pictures of me as a guy. I mean, I'm, I did it very well for 40 years, 50 years. Yeah. Carry the image off really well. But for me, it was about being who I am, helping you understand I'm not that typical guy. I like to hang out in the kitchen and do the cooking and the housekeeping. And my best friends are girls. But, you know, it was to help you understand me. Yeah. For me, walk in a room as a single white guy in his 60s, you would have certain conceptions about who I am. Whatever you see in the media or on the press or whatever, it's a small tip of the iceberg of like the actual transgender, com transgender community. There's so many more people and mostly closeted, married, Did you know, se deep, dark, deep, dark secrets. If that secret came out, it would ruin their lives, they think. Don't you think everyone kind of falls on a scale? I mean, I've met some guys who are like ultra, just, you know, just into women, 
Uh, I've met that guy, but I've met, there's a whole range and variety in between. Well, and our most yeah. true, honest self. Everybody has a little bit of everything in there, don't you think? That's the biggest misconception about transgenderism is that sex and gender are two different things. But sex is what you're born with. Gender is how you present. Ah, I like that. Right? Yeah. Feminine is fe the feminine personality. And traditionally, that has meant the housekeeper. I'm, I'm a 50s housewife. I mean, it's, you know, leave it to beaver and all that, you know. The wife stays home, the husband goes out and makes the living. That's such an ancient, you know, completely passe mentality now, don't you think? Now, Maddie, back to Grantland a little bit. Uh, Dr. V, who's portrayed, who actually committed suicide, uh, who's talked about on the article, and talks a lot about the demons of carrying that secret with her. Right. Like of uh, the fear of how society was going right. to treat Dr. V. And right. he believes that that's why she committed suicide. Uh, what are your thoughts on that? Well, you know, I like to say, you know, murder with a pen. I mean, this is this is this is a, a really tragedy. This is a tragedy. This person was outed in the media, and you know, the one thing you know about transgender people is don't out them. You know, it's 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 really not right. But for whatever reason, this person, as a journalist, felt he needed to dig into the story and find out the truth about the person who was presenting themselves as one thing, and they really was something else. And that one thing was a scientist with this great background. Apparently, she didn't have all that great background. I don't know, but. Um, whatever it was, deep, dark secret that she felt, for whatever reason, would ruin her life if it came out. Do you have any stories that relate to what we just read on the article on the Grantland? Well, I think everybody's got to know somebody who suffered from this, but I think there was a recently a story about a girl who committed suicide after somebody blogged something about her badly on the internet. I don't know. I mean, the numbers are crazy. 41% of yeah. the transgender community attempts to commit suicide. Yeah. I think there's a lot of unhappy people out there that are looking for an answer to why they're unhappy, and they say, well, maybe if I move to a different city, or maybe if I change my sex, or maybe if I change something. But, you know, if you're unhappy, you're going to be unhappy before or after. For me, it's like, I, I like to accept the gifts. This is who I am. Um, every day's a beautiful day, and, you know. Maddie Powers, it's been tremendous hearing Thanks. from you, and, and thank you so much. Thank you so much. For being on thank our show. Thank you so much. That was fun.